10. Again, you're having another cup of coffee with uh, Heat and Kogan. Um, we're still in the progressive reform era, and we're going to talk about politics. And what better way to start off talking by, about politics than starting with uh, muckrakers? One of the great words. Oh, I love it. You know, when we got back to like when we were doing uh, reconstruction, we had the scalawags and the carpetbaggers. Yep. This is definitely up there as one of the, the, the cool vocabulary words. Of now, this is, uh, this is one of these words that Theodore Roosevelt like, kind of coined, I, I believe. He was, the whole idea of it was there was a book called Pilgrim's Progress, mm -hmm. and there was one particular person that was, and we'll go into it with a political cartoon, that was raking up all of the nasty stuff that he had no idea to watch about the, the world that was going, around, uh, going on around him. He was raking up all the stuff he had no idea was going on yeah. around him, I think. It was constantly in the nasty the stuff, muck of things. the muck. It was 1621, I yeah. think, Pilgrim's Progress. Possibly. Possibly. I always use it but like when you when you uh, rake wet leaves. Right. And like what's underneath, all the worms and disgusting, yuck. But in terms of, of what muckrakers were, these were journalists that exposed corruption. And, uh, you know, then and now, um, is it nice to see a good story in the newspaper? Absolutely. Everybody likes a good story in the newspaper. However, the, that's not what sells. It, it's, it's the things that are not going on. Um, that muckrakers are going to help to expose to society. So, since we're talking about politics first, let us let's just go back to uh, this political cartoon and kind of like delve into this. And if you recall, the big thing coming out of this was that you had nativists who did not want immigrants coming into the United States. No, they did not. They did not for all these variety of reasons. Diseases, diseases, crime, jobs, yep. socialism, and anarchy taking away jobs from the white Native Americans. Right. Whatever it might be. However, you get to this political cartoon, and these guys are very welcoming to this skeleton that has cholera from Asia and these immigrants. And the thing is, is that, well, why would these gentlemen, dressed very nicely, be welcoming people into America down at the docks of Ellis Island? Simple fact of the matter is, is that this guy is corrupt. One of the things that I tell students this is that if they were to run for a public election, and now you're in eighth grade, and you know, now you're you're running for you know student body president, but you have you don't have the great the best reputation by the time you get to eighth grade, and you need votes. So who are you going to go to that doesn't know? That you have a horrible reputation that's new to the school. The incoming sixth graders. The incoming sixth graders. They, the incoming sixth graders are your, you know, your immigrants who are coming into the United States or a new building in this particular situation. You look here, similar to sixth graders, you have the upperclassmen or this politician here who's going, hey, welcome aboard, welcome to the United States. Now, you know, you're creating a very, very fond memory for that person. And on election day, they're gonna go, hey, when everybody else didn't want me, yeah, he did. And, and when he was, when particularly the Irish and German immigrants are coming off the boat, this particular man, we'll get into him, um, was kind of waiting with a loaf of bread and a cup of hot coffee. Absolutely. They're like, hey guys, vote for me and vote for the people I tell you to vote for. And I want you to just keep in mind these faces and particularly this Come large on. individual because we're going to see them again and again and again in this video. And now this strategy um, that where here you are, you're a politician and you're kind of being very nice to the new people, the immigrants, the ones who don't know better. This was a s skill Stop there, wait five seconds. This was a skill that not only did politicians use, criminals used. Take care of the poor within your neighborhood, and then when the police come around or you need something in return, they will keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. So there he is, Boss Tweed. William Tweed. Probably the most powerful man in New York politics in the late 1800s. And he really wasn't an elected official but he was the most powerful person, especially in New York City politics in the 1800s, post-Civil post War era into the uh, Reconstruction era as well. And here's the thing with him, unfortunately for him, um, from a size standpoint, he was a little on the heavy side, um, which is going to really be used against him when it comes to political cartoons and making him look ridiculous. The fact that he has the beard, and you know, we can kind of get into what that's gonna look like. Yeah. When it comes to reforming city governments, um, politicians like himself were uh, accepting money to give away city jobs. Um, we also saw, for example, ones like him. Uh, they were also gaining power in many cities. Boss Tweed winds up getting a lot of his 
power or starts to gain a reputation or I guess you could say a fan base or a clique of friends by starting off as a, as a uh, volunteer fireman in New York City. Um, so he was in that particular clique. Bosses were particularly uh, popular with the poor and as we saw in this political cartoon, you know, they're getting off the boat, they're being really welcoming. They took care of them. They took, they care, took care of them. And then they would remember them on election day. Yep. So, I mean, Tammany Hall, this is the, the organization, the meeting house, if you would. It's under construction right now, I think. Yeah, um, where, where Boss Tweed, this, you know, it was Tammany Hall was his organization, almost like the, his boys club. You know, and I mean, the corruption of Tammany Hall um, is, is it, it, it <laughs> goes without saying, you know, they were corrupt. But there's no better example than the building of the courthouse. Oh, absolutely. The Tweed Courthouse. And, and what went on in the building of this courthouse, the corruption that went on, uh, Tweed was handering, handing out contracts to friends. And so when you're, when you're a government official, when you're the government and you have something to build, you have to keep records of every dime that you're spending. This is exactly the direction I was yeah. gonna go with as well. You, this, is, this is where they finally get caught. You have yeah. to keep records of every dime that's being spent because you're spending taxpayer money. So Boss Tweed was like, all right, we need desks. Chairs and desks. We need desks. Yeah. Uh, we need 50 desks for this classroom. Yep. Every desk costs $100. He's like, no, it doesn't. Every desk costs $10,000. Yes, exactly. So they forged the books. All right, instead of $100, they, they, he, he would convince his friends, you charge the city $10,000 for 100 desks. I'll give you some money, known as a kickback, sure. and then we'll get the desk that we need, and I'm going to pocket the yes. rest of that money. I mean, tens of millions of, I think I have it here. It you know, ends up costing like $170 yeah, yeah, right. for 40 tables of chairs. Yeah. I mean, it, the, 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 the total cost of the millions upon millions of dollars that he stole from New York City taxpayers in the construction of this really nice courthouse. By and the way. even when we, when you, when you bring up the fact that now you have something documented, all right? Well, there's a lot of things that forced Tweed that was shady. When we started talking about this chapter, when we were talking about going and voting, you start off with a beard, you yep. go, you shave, you, you have a mustache, you go, you know, those things. You can't always prove in terms of, of documents as well because it's something that is shady. This. You can kind of say that this is a little bit shady too, but then again, you don't have the, that evidence or the documentation. He was being nice to immigrants. Oh no, he was being nice to him. He wasn't expecting anything from them. He was being nice to him. He was giving them jobs. You know, all of this stuff, kind of in the gray, gray area, a little shady. However, when you talk about now, once you write something yeah. down, you know, you can't really <laughs> hide for the fact that you're a dirtbag at this and point. And this isn't the first time we're going to talk about people writing things down oh, and yeah. what brings them down. Because when we get into like, the Prohibition Era, oh, absolutely. and what brings down Al Capone. Oh, yeah. You know, our documents and record keeping there as well. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Boss Tweed, just the level of corruption that went on with him, um, $100 million he winds up stealing from New York City taxpayers for Tammany Hall oh, yeah. and his friends and his family. And what brings him down? A cartoonist. A cartoonist. Yes. Thomas. Nass, one of the Best. greatest journalists oh, absolutely. in American history. Um, the pen is mightier than, than the sword. sword. Love it. You know, and, and yeah. He tried was, to pay him off too. Tweed tried to pay him off. <laughs> Bad <laughs> idea. Tweed was like, you know, I don't care what they write about me. I, I do not care what they write about me in the newspapers whatsoever. He's like, but my, my, my voters can't read. They can't read. They can't read. But they but, can't stop looking at those they damn can, pictures. They can see political cartoons. Yep. And when it came to you know talking about political cartoons, yeah, you can write all the stories you want about him, but his voters, the ones he was getting votes from, you know, who coming off here off the boat didn't speak English, they couldn't read, but they can identify, you know, these political cartoons. And they look forward to Harper's Weekly and came out once a week, and that's the best part of, of political cartoons. And it goes, this goes back to the the join or die political cartoon of Benjamin Franklin. Absolutely, like, you don't need a high level of education to understand what's going on here, yeah, or going on here. You know, you get it with a few simple words and and this ring, as yeah. we see here, and here's that guy with the glasses from before, that mustache guy from before, this big fat guy from before. You know, it keeps coming up and up and up. You know, the question here, who stole the people's money? Do tell, twas him. And each person is pointing around to the person next to them. Each of these were part of Tammany And Hall. this is appearing also in the New York Times as yeah. well. Uh, I think that's a very popular newspaper then and now. You would say. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Pretty reputable. 
Um, again, certain things that they do in here, uh, they make his size, they exaggerate his features as well to make him look ridiculous. You know, and that, that exaggeration of size is usually wealth, oh, yeah. power, greed. This medallion or necklace that he's always wearing around his neck as well. Mm -hmm. Again, girth, the money bag. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's all right. And again, you know, you're looking at, was he a big guy? Absolutely, but you know, they no, definitely. No, definitely exaggerated. They, they emphasized the it. obesity. Oh, they definitely That's emphasized it. And the thing is, is that ultimately, this is a good one too. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're a vulture, which is exactly what they're depicting him as, you're a scavenger. You're going after whatever's left. Um, with Tweed as well, this is actually a flattering picture, almost. Mm -hmm. With Tweed as well, um, when it came to him now, he winds up getting away, flees to Spain. They recognize him in Spain because of the political cartoons. You know, in Spain where they speak, you know, Spanish. So when you're talking about, you know, your level of education and, and it doesn't take much of a rocket scientist to dissect and understand these political cartoons. Um, you know, this is really what does them in, is these cartoons, which are great. I love this one because it's like, you've got your criminal yep. on the ball and chain, yep. you've got your cop, and then you got Boss Tweet. You know, representing that he's even above the law, or at least thought he was above the right. law during this time. And he will be brought down, and he will be sent to prison because of a cartoonist. Awesome. Hilarious. And he tried to pay him off. You know, I mean, as far as that corruption and how, I guess you could say, bold you were, you know, to try and pay off a cartoonist as well. I yeah. Mean, just to give you an idea, that power corrupts. So like, imagine being taken down by Homer Simpson. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's just like, that's what happened, boss. You're able to, it's like, you're able, if you go back to it, you know, there's some comedy in here. You're able to almost get away with spending $170,000 on 40 tables and chairs. Who yeah. brings you down? A cartoon. A cartoon. Oh, don't get any better. Raking that. up the muck. Yep. You know, that's all, all they were doing, raking up the muck. Um, and of course, when people start to find out with, about this, you know, about all this corruption taking place, it's going to lead to, okay, now... You know, we, we have a lot, we have a great deal of lying at, at certain levels taking place and cheating ta taking place at a certain place. We need to give power back to the voters, to the people itself. That's what you want to end off with this. Yeah. Right? Perfect. It's like, <laughs> you got defeated, man. It's like, I don't even know, the, is his arm missing? I don't even know. That's a cool no, one. But it, this is, this is, yeah. You got your butt kicked, Tammany ring smashed. You know, Boss Tweed sent to prison. I think he dies in prison. Does he die in prison? I believe so. I was like, I think it was. He wound up escaping because he was out on bail or something to that effect. And then, like, he wants to go to Spain. They wanted I, to get him. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was, uh, I forget what kills him, a disease in prison. I'll have to look it up. We'll let you guys know in the next, in the next episode. Perfect. Thank you for watching.